The Best Practices Analyzer is a fantastic way to leverage the rich history and knowledge of the experts just across Tadver modeling here and obviously analysis services. So we're, first we're going to navigate to the repository where the best practices rules are currently being stored. And if you'd like, obviously just scan through this page, read through, kind of understand if you'd like, also uh, contribute here. Just a little bit of a notes. But what we're going to look at first is the BPA rules dash standard dash, or I'm sorry, uh, period JSON. So if we click on this now, we're going to see all these rules here just within this GitHub page, but we actually want to click on the raw here on the right hand side. So if you click on that now, we'll get the raw format of this. Then at the very top, we want to copy that URL just from our browser. And within Power BI Desktop, uh, if you're not already in Tabular Editor, go and do so now. So navigate to External Tools, Tabular Editor. And then on the navigation pane here, we're going to go to our Tools. We're going to select Manage BPA Rules. And within this dialog box, we're going to do Add. We're going to select Include Rule File from a URL. So we're going to point to that raw JSON just stored out on the GitHub. So paste that here. And then whenever you're done, press OK. If you were to select this, you can see the collection, all of the rules contained within. And then uh, we're going to go and press OK. We're going to see how our model did in comparison with the experts. So let's go to Tools once again. Best Practices Analyzer. Or F10. If you're into the, uh, the shortcuts here with the hotkeys. Just move this over here. Go ahead and kind of zoom in here now. 168 objects in violation of 13 best practices rules. Oof, that's quite a lot here. So let's go ahead and collapse these. Just the very top, collapse all. Let's read some of these headers. Let's see what rules we're breaking. So provide format string for visible numeric measures. Do not use floating point data types. Uh, this one looks pretty interesting. Hide foreign key columns. So let's expand this out. Ah, uh, so it looks like a lot of my relationships here. So if I was to hover above one of the columns, I'll get a description here of what the, the rule is saying. So columns used on the many side of relationship should be hidden as the related dimension table is likely the best place to apply a filter. I would agree. Let's filter from our dimensions, not from our fact table. So I'm actually going to click on the generate fixed script here. Yes, press OK. It's now been copied to our clipboard. And then up on the advanced scripting section, we can do control V just to paste this here now. And I can see model.tablesorders.columns customer ID as date to column is hidden equals true. So it looks like we're going to go ahead and start maybe uh, applying a hidden property here. Interesting. So if I was to actually look at this table orders and just expand this out here now. So I see order ID, customer ID. If I was to run this, just go ahead and press the F5 button or the green run. I now see that they've turned gray. Well, that's pretty interesting. So if I jump over to my Power BI desktop, I still see him here. So I still see salesperson ID, customer ID. Why, I guess, why didn't it work? Well, it's because you need to actually save the changes here within Tabular Editor. Uh, so then that way it is applied to your Power BI desktop file. So right here in this button, you need to do a Control S, or just go ahead and click it now. And then we would press save. We'll actually see that these fields will be hidden. So I'm gonna press save here now. Instantly on the left hand side, Tabular Editor was to automate the hiding of these fields for us. Well, that's pretty cool. So we can automate a lot of our workload. Well, what if I was to go ahead and right click maybe on this, uh, this field, let's just do unhide all, kind of bring them all back here now. And if we look at Tabber Editor, the customer ID, the salesperson ID, now back in black. So Tabber Editor can both write down to the Power BI Desktop file, and then Power BI Desktop can go ahead and kind of read those changes back up in Tabber Editor. So depending upon where you're working, just those two being able to sync there. Uh, let's try something else, though. If we were to look back at the Best Practices Analyzer, I see this one. I don't really want to generate a fixed script. I, I trust this one, so I actually just want to apply the fix. I don't need to see it. I don't need to copy and paste it. I just want to apply it. It's very harmless. So if I plus apply, I see they're now gray. I remember I also need to go ahead and save this back just to have those changes updated within the PBIX file. Awesome. 
So definitely looking through the rules. I mean, if you trust them, if you've used them numerous times and you just want to press the apply fix, feel free to do so. If you want to kind of generate that script, paste in the advanced scripting window, and just kind of read through, understand what it's doing and understand the, uh, the properties that it may affect, I completely understand that too. Just especially here as you're getting started. Uh, but maybe within your organization, as you're kind of setting your standards and the best practices here within your kind of development team, maybe you want to build your own rules. So let's do tools, manage BPA rules. I'm going to bring this window over here again and I'm going to create a rule here on the local machine. So I'm going to do a new rule. And then the name of my rule here is going to be the disable auto time intelligence. The ID is automatically generated for me, so that's awesome. Severity, I do consider this one a pretty high one, just the model bloat, not a big fan. So category, I'm gonna put this in my performance. I'm gonna spare you reading this long description, but just let it be known. I'm just writing out what you can go ahead and do and kind of helping the next person. So whoever may in the future kind of leverage this best practice rule, they'll know where to go, they'll know what to do uh, just to disable that auto time intelligence. If you're not familiar with auto date time, look into it uh, just anywhere where you have a date or a date time field within your model is going to create kind of that virtual table in the background it may bloat your model especially if you have a lot of kind of date or date time fields uh, so it's something to be cognizant of something you want to kind of create a best practice around just having your organization your users your fellow developers having them disable that just wherever they can and then within my uh, applies to section this is going to apply to the overall model and then what I would like to do is go ahead and create a rule expression editor. So anywhere where I find this pattern. So it's going to be tables, period, uh, any, and then open parenthesis, name, period, starts with, open parenthesis, double quotes. And then the pattern here is going to be local. So capital L, date, capital D, and table, capital T, underscore, to the close quotes, close parenthesis, close parenthesis. Uh, minimum compatibility level is fine. And then if I was to do OK, kind of take a look back here at our model. I now see the new collection has been made uh, here within my rules. Go and press OK. I can see those local date tables here with the crazy good at the very end. So I'm just looking for the very beginning, kind of creating this rule. If I do tools, best practices, analyzer. Disable auto time intelligence, expand this out. It's telling me that this is a rule for the model. Hovering above it gives me those descriptions and instructions of things that I'll probably want to do to go and get this cleaned up. Jump over into the Power BI desktop. Let's go to our file. And then we're going to do the options and settings. Options. For this one, I'm going to go ahead and set it at the current file property. So here at the very bottom, data load. And I'm going to select disable this auto date time get out of here don't want you don't want you bloating up my model I can see him over here now if I press OK I would expect tab editor to go ahead and sync these changes so if I press OK awesome now it gives me this external change detected changes made to the model do you want to update the model metadata in tab editor yes of course it's going to make sure that these two are in sync press yes local date tables are now gone that's awesome what a great best practice.